Hello everyone and welcome to another Stargate lore video. Today we're going to be talking about the third class of Battlecruiser and the Tari fleet. Sir, we can't call it the Enterprise. Why not? Stargate Command's main objective was securing advanced technology for the purpose of defending the Earth. The greatest achievement of this goal was the creation of the Tari fleet, specifically the Battlecruisers that could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with various alien vessels. Sadly, the Battlecruisers only ever had two classes, the first was the Prometheus class named after the first battlecruiser Earth had made, the Prometheus, and was also the only ship of this class. The second, the Daedalus class, was named after the second ship Earth made, the Daedalus, and whose design was used for every ship after it, the Odyssey, the Corvell, the Apollo, the Sun Tzu, and the George Hammond. Which was probably for the best, no offense to the Prometheus, but between the two, I think one clearly looks better than the other. I think the Prometheus just looks awkward. I heard someone describe it as a box shoes that were stuck together, and yeah, I can kind of agree with that. For me, I think it's the tower section that just looks odd. The bottom section looks fine, and if you were to just go by that, you could see a natural evolution between this section and the later Daedalus class. A personal theory I like is the reason the Prometheus looks so weird is because it was Earth's first battlecruiser and they didn't really know what they were doing. And from that perspective, I think that's really cool. Still, it was said we didn't really get to see any more ship types Earth could have made in any of the shows. But did you know there is in fact a third type of ship class used in the Tari fleet? This class was introduced in the Stargate comic, Valamar Aldorian. I probably said that wrong, specifically in issues number 4 and 5. Now I know some people probably aren't happy with this as the canonicity of the comics and other extended media are often brought into question, but honestly I'm just happy this was done in a comic as opposed to a book since comics are a visual medium and we get to see what the ship looks like. And what does it look like? You think this is funny? In a cosmic sort of way, yes. Well, Mr. Funny Man, is this how you get your sick kicks? What? It's just an ordinary crabby- OH MY GOODNESS! SQUIDWARD! Okay, so let's get some context out of the way here first. This is the EOS, a Tari spaceship. Yes, that is the classification I could find for it as we don't really know much about this ship. The name, as far as I can tell, comes from the Greek goddess Eos, who was the goddess of the dawn. It was owned and operated by the United States and early command of a Colonel Freeman. By the way, this would be the sixth ship in the Tari fleet controlled by the US, and out of the total active ships in the fleet right now, all but one are operated by the United States. That's a uh, kind of a little sus if you ask me. Getting back on track, like I said, we know very little about this ship. We know it has sublight engines, maneuvering thrusters, and a hyperspace engine. We only ever got to see a few areas inside of the ship. The bridge, which looks a lot bigger than the previous bridges. Also, based on the window here we see inside and these windows we see on the outside, I'd say the bridge is located here, at the top of the ship, at the most exposed point. Yeah, we will circle back on this. It also has what I can only describe as some kind of meeting room, a containment room for holding large or dangerous items or beings, and is the largest part of the ship. The ship also has a hangar which can hold a minor sized starship. Based on this shot here, I think we can say that this is the entrance to the hangar, and given that there is one on each side of the ship, I think we can assume that there are two hangars. So basically someone took the outer hangars from the Daedalus and basically moved them to the interior of the ship, is the best way I can describe it. It is not shown if the ship has its own complement of F-302s. In fact, this is probably a good time to mention, we don't really know what the weapon capabilities of this ship are. I assume it has some weapons, railguns, missiles, and beam weapons, but it's never shown and good luck telling where they are in this thing. Okay, so now let's move on to the design of this thing, which when I first saw it, my reaction was... <laughs> <laughs> you know what it actually kind of looks like? It looks like someone took the Daedalus class, kind of smoothed it out, and wanted to add some kind of tower section like from the Prometheus, but made the tower some big box. There's also this weird thing I noticed where if we look at the back shots of the ship, it just sort of ends. I 
Don't know how else to describe it. Actually, here's a really good example. Let's take this model of a Star Destroyer and cut the back half off right after the tower section. Yeah, that looks kind of weird, doesn't it? I don't think this is a lighting or a penciling thing from the comic either. I think this is just how the ship is designed. So yeah, overall, I think this ship's design is a little... Eh? Like, I'd give it a 4 out of 10. Maybe 5 if I'm being generous. Now, I will say these two things in defense of the ship. Because, at heart, I am a nice person. And I imagine whoever came up with this must care about this design a little. I don't really have it in my heart to hate this ship, so let's go over some of the nice things. I do like the bottom half. I'm slightly concerned that I keep saying that. The bottom half looks really nice. It looks like a natural evolution from the Daedalus class. If you put the two next to each other, you could definitely say, okay, yeah, I can see how they got from there to there. It's the top half I take issue with, with this box tower-like structure just sitting on top of it. Yeah, we're probably gonna talk about that now. Why? Like, you have this nice bottom-looking section of the ship, and you place a box on top of it? There's this giant target to hit, and like I said, I'm pretty sure the bridge is located right there. Is the idea that this tower section is where the containment room is, and that's why it's so big? Did Earth really spend the few resources it has on making battlecruisers to make an oversized cargo ship? I'm the government. I'm the government. I'm the reason nothing works. Okay, yeah, getting back to nice things. Bottom half looks really good, top half sucks. The second nice thing I want to say is I did some checking and this comic came out around the same time as when Stargate Universe was on air. And this ship does share somewhat of a resemblance to the Destiny, specifically with the similar kind of box tower like structure set on the ship. If the idea is that both in universe and out of universe the Destiny influenced the design of this ship, well I think that's kind of... Now I say kind of because I don't really think it works here. Just because it works on the Destiny does not mean it works here. But if that was the concept, I think that's cool enough that I would accept that as an answer. And that is the EOS class. What do you think about it? Do you like it or dislike it or just acknowledge that it exists? Would you like to see the ship brought into Stargate proper one day? Tell me your thoughts in the comments below and maybe leave a like and subscribe. And remember, oh, we're not calling it that. Oh, good. Then what about, um, and we're not calling it the Enterprise either.